Hi everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Andrew Eckert, Business Development Manager from Oasis Software, Arab's in-house software development business. We are now just waiting a few minutes for everyone to join the webinar, so we'll start the webinar uh, again uh, in a few minutes time while we uh, let people in. In the meantime, if you could drop into the chat where you're joining us from or which part of the world you're joining us from today, because we, we'd like to see where you're at. Our uh, webinar today uh, will be hosted by Aditya Tiwari, our application specialist, Christian Nielsen, our product owner, and our lead developer, Tillman Reinhardt. Now, uh, we will have um, a chance for all of you to uh, ask questions at the end of the session. Uh, so what we would like to do is, is for you to use the Q&A button, which you should see at the top of your screens, to submit your questions. Then at the end of the um, of the session, I will read the questions out and one of our specialists uh, will give you uh, the answer. If we don't have time to cover all the questions uh, during today's session, we will get back to you by uh, by email uh, later on. Now, for those of you joining us from uh, phones and iPads, you may not be able to see uh, a QA button, and if you can't see it or find it, please put your questions in the chat because we don't want to miss uh, anybody's uh, input, and we do want to be able to get back to uh, to all of you. So, um, what I'll do now is for a few more minutes, we will get started, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to our first speaker, uh, Christian Nielsen. Christian. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining. My name is Christian Nielsen, and I'm the product of the Grasshopper plugins. Um, we are uh, in Oasis developing a um, bunch of software for the AAC industry. We both do structural, geotechnical, and pedestrian, pedestrian simulation. Today, we will talk about the structural products. Um, in our structural suite, we have TSA, which is the main software, finite element analysis. And then we have section designed for uh, AdSec, uh, that's concrete and composite section analysis. Compose, which is as the name um, suggests, a composite steel design, and then we have also ADC, which is a concrete member design. Um, in our little team, we are working um, around the core products and we are using the API. Um, we are making it easier to, um, to use the core products um, through, for instance, Grasshopper. Uh, we are not limited to Grasshopper plugins, we are also working with Rabbit and Speckle. And now I'll hand over to my colleague and good friend, Eddie. Yeah, so welcome everyone and thanks again for joining. I will take you through the next sections of the webinar. So let's start with a quick introduction of the plugins. Uh, first, we see GSA Grasshopper. So GSA Grasshopper is a fully parametric FAA plugin for Grasshopper. Uh, it's based on the new .NET API for GSA, which embeds the core GSA solvers inside Grasshopper, as opposed to linking the two software externally. Um, similarly, AdSec Grasshopper is also a fully parametric section analysis plugin, or cross-section analysis plugin for Grasshopper. It's also based on the new .NET API, and it also embeds the AdSec solvers inside Grasshopper. Uh, both of these plugins are publicly available as pre-release versions, so I just want to inform you that you should review the results carefully before you use them in projects as these plugins are still under active development. Um, so here is a first big picture overview of how we can begin to see the integrated workflows uh, using these plugins. Uh, we see that most of the scheme design and early stage detail design can be fully done inside Grasshopper with these plugins. So the general idea that you do a global analysis with the GSA Grasshopper plugin, you do the which informs the AdSec Grasshopper plugin for cross-section analysis, which then informs the global analysis model again, and so on. Uh, such workflows can be set fully inside Grasshopper. And as you move on to more advanced stages of detail design, you can take the models you've made in Grasshopper and do a more advanced analysis inside the respective main software. And this will be possible because of a bi-directional link that is there between these plugins and their corresponding main software. And once you're through, uh, you can then take the final design results further for drawings and coordination or for reporting. 
So I hope this gives you a big picture understanding of how we are going to go about the integrated workflows today. And maybe a short note on the Compost Grasshopper plugin is that yeah, it's also in the early stages of development right now and will be publicly available in the near future. So next, uh, let's have a quick overview of some of the interesting features of of the Grasshopper and AdSec, uh, of the GSA and AdSec Grasshopper plugins. So let's start with GSA Grasshopper. And at this stage, I'll assume that the audience is generally familiar with Grasshopper, at least with the basics of it. And so we see here on screen a simple Grasshopper script using GSA Grasshopper. And uh, the big picture or, or the key ingredients for this such a script are as what you would expect for any FES solver. You basically have the geometry, you have the materials and cross sections, you have the supports and the loads which together go into an FEA solver from which you get the results. The results are available as both uh, in a graphical contour format with a legend as well as in a data format for, for further calculations. Um, I think all the D as you can see some interesting features are that while making members you can assign end releases with these little checkboxes. Uh, while assigning supports you similarly can release degrees of freedom with these checkboxes. Um, you can, well, you can access the different results for different load cases by this drop down menu here. And finally, once you are satisfied with the model, you can just save it as a GW, a GWB file or a GSA model and open the model in GSA. Uh, so then basically you have created a new GWB file which you can directly open in GSA and this would be an analysis model which you can share with your colleagues uh, or you can take it forward for further advanced analysis inside GSA. So this is a very, I hope a simple enough big picture understanding of how the plugin can be, how scripts can be made with this plugin. Um, so now let's look at some interesting features from this plugin. Uh, the first is the range of possibilities to make cross sections. As you see, you can change the units of what you are setting up with this uh, with these menus, and then you have a range of possibilities to set up the cross sections, and you have the entire catalog of steel sections which are available in which cover a wide a wide range of international standard uh, standards. They are available as they are available in GSA main software. They are available in the GSA Grasshopper plugin as well. Uh, next interesting feature is the measure. Now you need to stop worrying about making intersections between anything and anything. As you see, the measure in GSA is quite powerful. It can solve for all the intersections between 1D and 2D members, 2D and 2D members, or points in 1D members and you, all the intersections are solved for you by the measure. Um, so you just need to model the big structural objects and all the finite elements will be generated by the measure. Uh, I guess another good point to note about the measure is that you can set the size of the meshes differently. Uh, if we see closely, let's wait for this to begin again. Um, here's a mesh size which is constant. But as soon as I get the curves, I get some finer meshes around the curves. Now this was intentionally set to show how you can control the mesh size in different uh, parts of the model should you need to. And next interesting features is how you can work with existing GSA models. So you can open the model like that. Uh, you can get the model of the, or the geometry of the GSA model to the right scale like that and you have information of all the existing nodes for example all the existing 1d members and their ids all the 2d members and their ids uh, next you can get all the analysis tasks and cases that are existing in the model as you see all the time history cases here for example you can get the loads in the model uh, to the right scale. So you get the gravity loads, um, no node loads here, but the beam loads. Um, then you and you can also get the cross section properties for let's say the 1D cross section properties or the 2D properties. And you can keep going further if you, let's say you want to deconstruct the properties further, 
and then you get the IDs of the individual cross sections, the profiles, the materials that are there, and even the section pools, which is something more relevant for steel design. So as you can see, you can go into quite a lot of depth while working with existing models. Um, another thing you can do with existing models is, let's say you have such a geometry and you just change some parts of the existing model. Like here with this simple frame, we warp its outer surface to get this sort of a uh, complex geometry. While we retain the other existing parts of the model, which is that we retain the cross section properties, the supports, the releases, etc. So such hybrid workflows to work with existing models and the and grasshopper would also be possible. Uh, and that covers GSA grasshopper. Now I guess we can move on to AdSec Grasshopper. And if you have a quick overview, so similarly, there are a few key ingredients while setting up an AdSec Grasshopper script. Uh, you need the materials, both for concrete and for the rebars. You need the size of the cross section. Uh, you need the rebar layout. And with this information together, you get the, you can analyze the cross section for its strength, which you then compare against the external loads and the results you get for the cross section would then be the ULS results and the SLS results. So the ULS results would include things like the utilization of the section and the SLS results would be the crack widths, the deformations, etc. And some good to know features about the AdSec Grasshopper plugin uh, would be at first you can parametrically control the layout of the rebar. And as you see, you can change the number of top bars, bottom bars, side bars, etc. You can control that parametrically. The second interesting feature is an access to the stress strain curves of the materials. So you can get access to the stress strain curves used in the models for standard materials as we see here. We see the SLS and ULS stress strain curves. But also you can make your own cross section uh, stress strain curve should you want to have some more custom analysis. For example, let's say I want to have a trilinear material curve for an analysis, which is uh, for a cross section analysis. I can set it up like that, that I first choose the points of the piecewise linear function. Uh, then with some of the components in the AdSec plugin, and some grasshopper tricks, I can get the stress strain curve, which as you see now becomes the trilinear curve. And this trilinear curve can then be used further for SLS or ULS design for the cross section. Um, and finally, the results from AdSec are basically a biaxial cross sectional capacity, which is calculated as a 3D curve or a 3D onion, as we like to call it. Here you see the biaxial capacity and it's 3D onion. And what you can start to do is to take, well, is to take the 3D curve and take slices out of the 3D curve, which will start to give you the familiar capacity curves, which are either the axial force and moment, let's say P and MY, P and MZ, or MY and MZ. And these capacity curves can be taken at different slices from the 3D onion and the different angles of the slice which you take. They will in fact be representative of the different angles of the applied moments and the capacity of the cross section for that direction of the applied moment together with the action loads. So as you see, it's quite a comprehensive cross section analysis tool with the entire bi action sectional capacity available in Grasshopper. So that was a quick overview of the plugins. I hope now you have a working idea of how the plugins can be organized and, 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 and models be set up with these plugins. Now let's start diving into how we can set up integrated workflows with these two plugins. Uh, we start with something simple. Uh, basically, let's start with a simple column design uh, script. So um, here's the premise. Let's say we have such a parametric model where we are changing the grids and we can change the, the number of floors and the floor heights. 
and we want to set up an integrated workflow which can help us to do both a global analysis and a cross-section design of the columns for this model. So most of the model will be set as we saw earlier with the key ingredients for the global analysis and section analysis, but the key links between the models will happen here. Uh, the first thing you need to ensure to link the models is that you have the same cross-section properties in the in the two models. So you just do that by inputting the same parameters to the dimensions and making sure that the units are consistent in the both in both the models. And then the next thing you do is that you link the outputs of GSA to inputs of ADSEC. So the idea is that the global analysis results from GSA become the design input loads for ADSEC. Uh, so here I've done some quick post-processing of the global analysis results I get from GSA, basically to include the code specified minimum eccentricities for column design, which can be set up simply. And then I get the design loads, which can be used for section design. Um, I think the good thing to, rem to know here is that the sign convention for 1D members is consistent uh, in GSA and ADSEC. So, so then hence you can directly plug in the internal forces and moments uh, as I've done it here. So now, now that we have established the links, here is how things will start to look like that here's a global analysis model uh, which has all the structural members. So uh, now since the goal for this for this analysis model is the load takedown of columns, hence I've kept the mesh size for this labs quite coarse. Then I have the section model. Here you see I'm parametrically changing the rebars, etc. So the point to note here is that the, the rebar inputs are exclusive to the ADSEC model, uh, whereas the size of the cross section that is something which is going to both at second GSA models hence completing the link. So if we want to start thinking in terms of a workflow, we have started with a mother GSA model, which can either be coming from the GSA desktop or GSA UI or be made in GSA Grasshopper. From that we do a load takedown and with the load takedown, we can precise the columns with at GH and this is how the workflow would look like in, in uh, the integrated workflow would look like. So we parametrically change the global model, which updates the load takedown in the columns, for which I get a real-time feedback of the concrete column utilizations from ADSEC. So here, as you see, my utilization is still a bit more than one. I want to take it, I want to drive it lesser than one. So I change the grids a bit, uh, reduce the bay widths a bit and when I update my utilizations, um, I see they have improved, but still a bit more than one. So now I can either, let's say, increase the cross-section size or just increase the rebar diameter, which is what I do. And and there I have, a, now I have some reasonable utilizations. Um, I guess some points to note here is would be that I personally set the script up this way because I like to see three different utilizations to understand which is the dominant internal action. But of course, you could get a single utilization, which is the maximum of the three and work with that. Also, uh, for simplicity in this model, we had set all the cross section sizes for all the columns to be the same. But of course, the obvious next step is to group columns uh, based on the loads. And then you can start get getting different sizes for different groups and the, and the corresponding utilizations. And once we have organized the script in this way, different groupings, uh, fair utilizations, uh, then we already have completed more or less a scheme design exercise for the columns. So that was the first workflow. I hope it was simple enough to follow. And now we will get uh, over to a little more involved workflow. Um, the key idea here is that we will find and implement the crack stiffness of a concrete slab in an analysis model. And the motivation is to get an upper bound and a lower bound solution for the load takedown, which will then be used for the structural design of all the load bearing members. So, 
in terms of our workflow, what we have done so far is this. We have done the pre-sizing of columns with AdSec Grasshopper. Now, to get the crack stiffness for every flow, the first step would be to extract sub-models of the flow from the GSA or from the main GSA Grasshopper model. And how we can do that is, let's say we have an existing model. I select a flow from which uh, I assign pin supports at the column locations and make all the other members dummy. And this is how I get a sub model which just represents the flow and the column locations. Now that I have the sub model, next step will be to calculate the crack stiffness for the sub model using AdSec Grasshopper. So again, the first step would be to set the models up with the ingredients which we saw in the first section. But when it comes to linking the models here, again, the first step towards linking will be to make sure that the properties are constant in both the models. So the thickness of the slab basically becomes the depth of the AdSec section. And the width of the AdSec cross section is taken as one meter which works well with GSA results for 2D elements, which are also in per meter units. So the results are kilonewton per meter or kilonewton meter per meter. So you can basically directly get the results and apply them as input loads without any loss of accuracy in linking the models. Um, then uh, as before, we get the outputs of GSA, which become inputs for AdSec. Um, here I do some post process processing to get the wood armor moments from the GSA results for 2D elements. And these wood armor moments then become the input moments for the AdSec cross section. And finally, from AdSec, the key results which I'll be interested in for this exercise would be the crack width per 2D element and the secant stiffness per 2D element. So the secant stiffness is now become uh, the secant stiffness becomes the new stiffness per 2D element, which now includes the effect of cracking of concrete. And the crack width per 2D element is useful in visualizing the cracking of the slab, see which parts of the slab are cracking by how much, for example. And the results look like this, that if you want to visualize the crack widths uh, along with the contour, here's how we can begin to see that where the crack width has spread in the on this lab and to and let's try to make some sense of the results which we are seeing. So if first we see the deflected slab, uh, shape of the slab, uh, we see that the deflected shape of the slab is as we see here, that the highest deflection is in the longest end span, which is expected from like if you think of an equivalent continuous beam. And so you would get the highest deflections in the longest end span. And this is what this is consistent or, or well correlated with the crack with contours, which you saw earlier. We see the highest cracking in the regions where we see the highest deflection, and we see high cracking at some location at some of the column locations in this lab. So, so now that we have calculated the crack stiffness of the slabs, and let's say we do it for every floor, the next step would be to get a load takedown. Uh, which will now be, which will include the effect of the crack slabs on the model. So the idea is to have these two models, the upper bound and the lower bound, uh, which the upper bound model is completely uncracked concrete slabs. The lower bound model is cracked concrete slabs. And in reality, the forces in or the load takedown in the buildings would be somewhere in between these two. So hence an envelope of forces which comes from both of these models would be the correct design loads for for uh, for our structure. So this is what we can begin to see if we to to get a quick sense of what the two bounds of the models look like. We see a crack concrete slab and an uncracked concrete slab, and we see the difference in the deflections at least qualitatively. And and then we can start seeing the support reactions, which are representative of the column loads, or in the big picture, they represent the load takedown. So here's where we begin to see the differences. And 
here is the kind of envelope which we should use for structural design. So this can be used for designing the columns or of the foundations and so on. So now if we see the big picture workflow, we have calculated the envelope of forces coming from the load takedowns for the upper bound and the lower bound models. And then as we did before, we could design the columns with as a grasshopper for these envelope of forces to complete, let's say the first stage of detailed design or for, for designing the columns. Um, something which we could also do with this workflow is since we have the sub extracted the sub models for flows and calculated the track stiffness for these sub models per flow, we can start looking at some flow vibration results already which use the same sub models. So here's where we will start to use the footfall analysis capabilities of GSA. So and that would be the next workflow we see how we can integrate the uh, footfall analysis model. So the first step again is to extract a sub model. So here I extract a flow. I refine the mesh because now this is a local model for which we want to see the flow results. And I can assign some pin supports to all the outer edges to ref to represent the facade restraints. Um, I guess a good point to note here that you have extracted the sub model from a parametric global model in this case, as opposed to extracting a sub model from an existing GSA model as we did earlier. This is just to show that there are a range of possibilities of how you can extract sub models. You, you have a lot of freedom and flexibility while using these plugins. And so once we have extracted the sub model, I can then do a model analysis inside uh, with CSA Grasshopper. And I can start looking at the mode shapes of my flows and the associated natural frequencies. So the idea here would be that uh, let's just make sure that the model is working correctly. We get sensible mode shapes and sensible uh, frequencies for the mode shapes. And, and once we are confident of the results which we're seeing in Grasshopper, uh, we can then take this model, uh, save it as we do here with the safe component and then we open it in GSA. And, and now we have the sub model which we generated uh, inside Grasshopper, which is now in the GSA UI. And now we can look at the footfall results. The key metric for me is the response factor, which I can visualize with contours here, so called R factor for resonant or transient cases. So, and then Based on these results and my satisfaction, I can go to refine my model in back in GA, back in Grasshopper. So this would be the maybe some concluding remarks on the on the big picture workflow. The idea is that we can, as you said earlier, that we can set up scheme design and early stages of detailed design fully inside Grasshopper with these plugins. And when you want to do more advanced and rigorous analysis like footfall time history, response spectrum of soil structure interaction. We can take the models which we made in Grasshopper, open them in the main software and do the advanced analysis there. And this is how we see the plugins and the main software complementing each other. So that was a quick overview of how the integrated workflows with these plugins could look like. I hope I could get give you some ideas of how you can start using these plugins in your day to day engineering practice. I guess as a last note from me, I would like to show you how you can install these plugins. So you just go to package manager in Rhino. You make sure that you have checked this box called include pre releases. And you search for, if you search for AdSec, you get this plugin with the logo. And with GSA, you get the official OSS GSA plugin. And you just click on install. And you need to restart Rhino. And then when you open Grasshopper, you would have the plugins installed. So that brings me to the end of my section of the webinar. Um, I would now like to pass on to my colleague, Dilman, who would so we'll talk about some next steps for us. Thank you, Adi. 
uh, now a few words on next steps and future development. And I believe this actually has been just asked also on the Q&A. So if you uh, look at the left, you might recognize some of those graspable components uh, that we uh, showed before uh, when we wanted to create um, sections for both GSA and ADSEC. So in both cases, cross section require pretty much the same input, which is mostly just the thickness. So you could instead use a workflow similar to the one shown here, where we make use of one of GSA's edit components to read a thickness and pass it on to ADSEC to create an ADSEC section. Also, currently, those two cross sections are treated a bit differently. As you can see, the parameters on the right are still red. So casting those parameters directly between GSA and ADSEC is not working. So one of our short term goals is to add direct conversion routines between ADSEC and GSA. So you could plug a GSA cross section into anything that requires an ADSEC cross section and the other way around, which means the user only must create cross section once either using ADSEC or GSA. So the idea is to, to add built in interoperability for all the links between ADSEC and GSA that we have soon seen during this presentation, making them work more seamlessly and requiring less manual input in the grasshopper. That also includes, besides those shared cross sections, having shared materials, for example, or as well um, adding a component that helps creating ADSEC design loads from the GSA results, something that we also have seen before, but without, without having to do those post processing steps manually in Grasshopper. So, another feature we want to add is uh, improved interoperability with Speckle. Speckle is an open source AEC data platform and is commonly used to exchange data between different software packages in the AEC sector, like for example, Revit or a structural suite like GSA. So you can, for example, save a GSA model directly to the cloud or easily share that model with a client or inform your architect about your current design. And the only thing your client or architect requires to view that model, maybe even with some results, is a browser with an internet connection. And with this slide, we have arrived at the end of our presentation. Are there any questions? Okay, everyone. Right, I'm going to have a look now at uh, the questions that you've asked. Uh, what I'll be doing is uh, reading them out, and then one of our specialists will jump in and, uh, and provide an answer uh, for you. So I'm just going to go in and have a look now, and we'll start with the uh, first question that was asked and work our way uh, through the list for the remainder of the period. I'm just waiting for the Q&A list to uh, to come up and um, I will go for there. OK, well, there's quite a number of them. I'm just trying to get down to the bottom of the page so that I can uh, uh, start the questions. Right. Um, our first question is from um, uh, Guillaume Laurent. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. Uh, I was wondering, do we have a combined plugin pack for installation? Um, does anybody give us an answer for that? Is there a combined plugin pack for installation? I've answered that also in the Q&A. So um, currently each plugin, and there aren't that many, there are only two or three, must be installed individually. Um, so that's about um, two minutes. And you can do that directly from inside uh, Rhino's package manager. Um, we must give a lot of credit to how easy Rhino have made it to install plugins. Uh, you simply just type package manager and then a window comes up and you search for the plugins. You hit install and that's also where you can get the uh, latest updates. If you uh, if you happen to be on an old version, just go in there and check and you can just with one click update to the latest version. It is so simple. The plugins are also on Food for Rhino if you um, prefer that way, but um, yeah, we recommend to do it uh, through Package Manager. Okay, uh, great. I'm also going to now um, uh, read out another question which has already been briefly answered, but for the sake of um, uh, everybody. Um, so we've mentioned that the uh, this is a question uh, from uh, Panos uh, uh, Gianac. Um, you mentioned that the GROSS uh, GSA uh, embeds the solver and does not call the software. Does this mean that we have to look for gross errors that would not manifest if we were working on the standalone software? There's a couple of answers in there. If we could just recap for the sake of the full audience. So if I jump in there, um, you don't have to be afraid for any gross errors that are introduced by GSA Grasshopper or this additional API layer um, because we 
we actually take a lot of effort in writing a lot of unit tests uh, in ensuring that this doesn't happen. Because of course, that's super important that the software really provides you with the results that you expect also from the standalone software. So like big parts of our work are just ensuring basically that uh, writing all kinds of, of tests, also end-to-end -end tests running the whole Grasshopper scripts to really make sure that the results are exactly the same as in the standalone software. Great, okay. Now, uh, Tim Stewart's asking if there is somewhere with a set of good examples of the loads discussed today uh, in use to reference uh, when people that are new to the software are giving it a try. Um, now, Christian has answered that and put um, uh, a web address um, into the q and I don't know if everybody can see that though. Can somebody possibly put that into um, the chat so that everybody can see the address? Can that be done or can someone read the address? Perhaps? Um, while that's been done, I can also extend Tilman's answer that uh, we have the example files that are on our open source repository on GitHub, and these actually form part of the testing. So every time you make a new version, these are being uh, tested as part of the release process. Um, so you can be sure that these tests uh, or these example files, they um, pass all our tests. Um, and they are growing every day. There's more and more. And it is open source, so if you have a test that you would like to add, then you can send it to us and we will include it in the repository or a good example file. Yeah, I might add to say that I'm quite, we are quite open to taking ideas for demo files. So if you have some quick demo ideas which you would like to see with the plugin, just let us know and we'll make it work. So, yeah. All right, uh, next question from Andrew uh, Patterson. Can the GSA plugin take an existing model? Uh, and be used to look at section results where there are many permutations faster than GSA interface itself. Again, this has been answered quickly, but if we could just recap for the sake of the full audience. I think Christian answered oh, this. Um, it appears yeah, here, um, I'll, I'll go ahead. You, you can use the plugin uh, to view combination results uh, and the speed is very similar uh, to uh, GSA uh, itself. Uh, moving on um, to um, is it George Pop, um, there is a tool for multi. Is there a tool for multi-objective optimization such as Octopus coming with the GSA plugin? I think I can shortly answer that. That well, okay. the GSA plugins and the outputs are organized in a way that you can quite you use it quite well with things like Galapagos, Octopus, Wallace, etc. Uh, maybe an interesting thing to know is that we output the total strain energy uh, for, for beam elements, which is something which is the key thing you need to to set up such optimization routines with Galapagos, Octopus, etc. So yes, while there's no, uh, I hope I understood the question correctly, that there's no, uh, let's say that we don't have an official deal with Octopus to make some custom plugins to link the two, but the results which you get from GSA Grasshopper, especially the data results, the strain energy results, etc., are the things you need to set to get started with the optimization procedures. Yeah. OK, and I'll just recap on that. This also um, can be looked up uh, at uh, GitHub, uh, the Arab group uh, on GitHub under the GSA uh, Grasshopper uh, heading. Uh, so anybody that wants to look into that uh, can do so uh, via GitHub. Um, so next question we have is, from um, Sinu uh, Cletus, uh, what is, right, why is this better than ANSYS or Abacus? So there's a good question. Uh, who would like to have a go at that one? Christian, I think you've already started. Well, we are, of course, very proud that we've made a customized Grasshopper plugin for TSA and for AdSec. And uh, Andrew, then maybe you can uh, answer the the latter, I believe that we are relatively um, cheaper than the competitors for our core software. Uh, right, well, I mean, we are competitively priced, um, but yes, uh, I, th I think you'll find that um, if you putting everything together, uh, there's certainly a lower cost to uh, using uh, a faster software um, while compared to uh, other uh, other packages that are on the on the market. Um, but thank you, uh, thank you, Christian, for the um, this is set up of the workflows and the parametric uh, answer that you gave in the Q and A. I think um, I might add to the 
to the previous you question, may. which is well, uh, the end goals of the software are different, right? Like, let's say you want to do a footfall analysis for a real construction project. The way this is set up in GSA, it's very much tailored to how a structural engineer would use it in your day-to-day -day life. While for setting up an ANSYS model, an Anastina model, you might have to set up a hundred time histories, get out all the graphs, do the superpositions by yourself. By yourself. We do all of that as a rational post processing for you to directly get you the R factor or the response factor, which is your key output for the footfall analysis, right? So any other similarly such other things like response spectrum analysis, you have all the international codes which are included in in the in setting up the response spectrum curves in GSA. Uh, so the idea is that this is a high fidelity very fast finite element analysis solver tailored to the structural engineering industry, which now comes with its own grasshopper plugins, the first party, which is also something unique. And these are the advantages for end users who we believe are mostly structural engineers. So, yeah. Great, you did a very thorough answer. Thank you for that. Um, right, the next question we have uh, is from Leon uh, Hedwig. Um, it says, can we directly link sections defined in GSA to ADSEC? For example, can we directly create ad set sections and analyze them, extracting extracting uh, the section dimensions from G from the GSA uh, model? Um, now, I think um, Aditya did explain a little bit about that during uh, during the session. Um, however, Tillman says that currently um, not. This is actually being worked on. So, I don't know if Tillman, if you want to explain what's on the roadmap uh, connected to that question. Sure. So I, I would say like it's it's quite direct already, but of course it could be even more direct. And this is really something we want to implement quite soon. This is really short term roadmap um, because of course like a GSA cross section is not that uh, different to an adsec cross section. So this is a quite easy win for us as well. And um, yeah, I mean I think it's quite natural thing to use the cross section of the one plugin and and use it in the other. Uh, because of that reason, um, yeah. So it's it's really something we're working on um, at the moment, and um, yeah, looking forward to, to get it um, incorporated in the plugins. Okay, so you are able to uh, carry out those sorts of uh, um, uh, transactions now, but it's going to be made uh, easier in the plugins uh, in the, in the future. Um, right. So next question we have uh, is from uh, George uh, Pop. Uh, again, uh, which options do I have for dynamic analysis? And I'll just go ahead and read this out. Um, Christian has answered the question in the chat. Says, we can run all solvers uh, from GSA uh, with Grasshopper. So um, yes, you should be able to, uh, to do that uh, straight through Grasshopper using GSA uh, already. Uh, the next question we have again from uh, George. Uh, can I um, export GSA results and use them in LS Dyna? Uh, and the answer is yes, uh, you can. Uh, you can export GSA models directly into LS Diner, uh, and we do have um, information about that um, again on our document website, uh, which you can access where you can get uh, further uh, information. Um, next, I'm going to move on to a question by uh, Barath uh, Ragesh. Can you run dynamics or buckling inside Grasshopper now? Yes. I mean, short answer is the yeah. short answer. <laughs> you get out well there, and maybe I can complete by saying that you get the mode shapes as well as the buckling factors uh, in case of global buckling, uh, which you can use further. Yeah. Okay. The next question uh, again. I'll give the question and the answer is the best place uh, to download uh, the add-ons. Um, it's w, it's uh, foodforrhino.com. Uh, is the best place to go uh, to um, to get those and to download them and get them working uh, on your machines. Right, we're going to keep running through. The next question is from. I can't see the name, Rebecca. Sorry to keep you waiting, everybody. I'm just trying to get uh, to the question. It's, uh, it's moved on my screen. Rebe Rebecca Morgan, uh, is there a way to model springs using the grasshopper? Uh, GSA plugin. So yes. Christian's given uh, an answer here. Um, you create new spring properties uh, from scratch inside uh, Grasshopper using uh, GWA command, or you can reference them from an existing or otherwise blank GSA file. Um, Addy, you've enjoyed expanding on a lot of the uh, answers given. Do you have anything to add to that? Or? I do. I, um, <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, just to add to, Chris, to Christian's answer, so the spring properties like the stiffness, etc., can be defined with TWA inputs or 
reference files, but the spring geometry, like the start point and end point, is then what you set up in Grasshopper. So, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, another one here. A uh, question from um, Kabija Leona uh, Vikicic. Uh, how do we check if there is? How do we check if there is a, a warning error in the model that could affect results without opening G GSA? So that's a, a good question. Um, Christian, you've given some information on that. Perhaps you'd like to expand on. Sorry, I was answering one of the other questions. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, um, Christian. The, uh, the question's been asked: Is that how how we can check uh, if there are war uh, warnings or errors uh, in the model uh, that can affect affect the results? Um, you've noted that errors in the solver uh, will make the analysis compared uh, go red. Warnings will not come through at the moment, so similar to the answers below. Uh, so you need to check the model uh, in GSA. Um, I think after you've used Grasshopper, is that uh, correct, Christian? Yeah. That is correct. There might be some um, errors or warnings related to uh, mesh sizes um, with very pointy meshes and wrong angles. And, and those sort of issues doesn't boil through to the Grasshopper interface. But if there's an error in the analysis, uh, the analysis component will simply just go red and won't give you any results. Um, so in that sense, it works uh, very similarly to GSA. Um, Okay, great. Um, another question uh, from, um, I think it's a Y, uh, Zergo. Uh, is, is it possible to create lists uh, from uh, GSA Grasshopper? Short answer on that one is uh, that yes, you can. You can do this through uh, the GWA uh, command uh, component. Uh, try and move on, trying to answer all the questions uh, within the period. Next one from uh, a, a Thomas Chandler. Can you load an existing GSA model into Rhino, make updates in Grasshopper and then push it back into a GSA file. Uh, again, short answer to that one uh, is yes, you can. You can also use um, all the built-in Grasshopper geometry transformation components with the GSA Grasshopper objects. So moving mirrors, arrays, and etc. So very uh, a short answer is, is, is yes, you can. We're moving uh, forward now to uh, Guillaume, uh, Guillaume Laurent, um, I think we've, we've uh, seen questions from before. Is there an Optimization section sizing tool uh, for a given section catalog, material code, displacement, and natural frequency. Uh, we don't have a written answer for that, so guys. Uh, so the at least for steel design, yes. So there's the steel designer in GSA, which can help you to well optimize the cross section sizes from a set of the, the big picture workflow is that you set up the global model, you give it a pool of cross sections for beams, columns, braces, etc., and you get the optimized results either grouped or or separately for the best utilized section for each member. At the moment, how you would set it up is that you set up the base model in Grasshopper. You can assign the, let's say, the first, the correct pools and the correct uh, section labels inside Grasshopper, but the final steel optimization would be done inside GSA. But as you see, as you saw earlier, you can just save the Grasshopper model, open it in GSA and run designer. So it's quite a smooth workflow between these two software. So yeah, in general with the GSA optimizer, steel optimizer, you can optimize to get the minimum weight. Or you can optimize to minimize the embodied carbon. You can minimize cost, etc. So yeah. All right, terrific. Uh, another question just added uh, recently from uh, K Alika Nadshim Pereira. Uh, can we perform both manual and automated optimization? Again, we don't have a written answer for that. So off the top of your heads, anybody, can we perform both manual and automated optimization? I mean, I will only repeat my previous answer that at least. Yes, I mean, I, I, I if I understood it correctly, steel specific optimization is in GSA, but should you want to set it up? With genetic algorithm optimizers like Galapagos Octopus, you can do it inside uh, inside Grasshopper itself. So, yeah, I think I'll only repeat my answers to say that yes, you can set up optimization routines. So, okay, terrific. Uh, we have another question um, from uh, Helen Hong at uh, TESS. Uh, will you be offering a platform for questions and answers and sharing tips and examples like in a public forum for our users? I mean, I know we've talked about this. Uh, do we have any plans to actually implement something like that? Does anybody know? 
don't think we have an actual plan for it, but it's a great idea and I would love to facilitate that. Right now, if you have any issues, you can write it in the GitHub repo, but um, I appreciate um, it will be better to have a forum for these kind of things. So let's take that one back and figure something out. Okay, but again, yeah, I know that there has been some uh, chat about creating forums. Uh, and so uh, if and when that happens, uh, we will make an announcement and let people know where they can find um, where they can find the forums uh, to interact with uh, one another. Um, next question. Um, sorry to keep you up, just going to get back to it. Right, the AdSec version uh, 10, um, 10 has basic error in stress strain curve. Uh, with these additional plugins in Grasshopper, developer needs to take responsibility and ensure uh, that basics of analysis and input in the software is correct. Um, more of a statement than a question. Is there anybody like to comment on that? I mean, please share the errors you have found with us. You can write it to us at oss at adam.com and we'll be happy to see the errors you found and get back to you further. Yeah. Yes, uh, we certainly will. We'll try and answer that question uh, via email yeah. later on. Uh, another question from uh, Rebecca Morgan. Uh, can you create alignments and paths and run the bridge loader with the GSA plugin for Grasshopper? That one's a bit more difficult. There aren't any direct um, uh, components to to do that. However, if you do have the geometry, um, you can do some things with the GWA command. I appreciate that's a bit uh, difficult to set up, but it technically is possible and we can help you set that up. Um, but it's it's not for a typical Grasshopper user, I would say. It's a little bit more um, advanced. Um, yeah, so if you have an actual uh, project, we will be very happy to help you set that up. Okay, great. So if you contact us uh, uh, later, we'll get in contact with Rebecca and see if we can uh, help with that uh, at all. Um, next question from uh, Karima Umish. I can't see your whole name because of the uh, way the screen is set. Uh, does um, P stroke M interaction curve generated in Grasshopper have an option to vary the angle of NA as well? And again, I'm throwing that out to any of you because there's no uh, written response yet. That so, was just two minutes ago. Yeah, so you, I mean, we have the onion and you can make a MM cut, which is a vertical plane. I believe, and you can rotate that um, under all the angles between M and M, MYY and MZZ, and then you can do a horizontal cut, which is the NM diagram. Um, if you wanted to, you could cut yourself manually, because um, it is the, we have converted it into a mesh in Rhino, and therefore you could actually get it uh, in any sort of angle that you want, but the, uh, the, there's a component to create this NM diagram, PM diagram, uh, and that can currently just do the, um, the horizontal cut and a vertical cut that you can rotate. And the horizontal cut you can move up and down wherever you want on that onion. Okay. Right, well, that appears to be the last uh, question in today's uh, Q&A. Um, so what we're going to do then is we will um, have a recording of this webinar uh, available and we will send this out um, to the participants so they can refer back to it uh, in the in the future. Uh, if there are no uh, further questions, uh, we're going to end uh, today's session uh, then um, in the next uh, few minutes. I uh, would like to say that um, anybody not using uh, GSA or ATSEC at the moment, if you contact us directly, uh, myself and uh, one of the three uh, other presenters will be happy to do a, a Teams meeting uh, for you and, uh, and your team. And uh, I'd like to say thanks to everyone uh, for attending today. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your time. Thank you for your time.